Hey guys, Mead Ruddle, Chris Tomer here. It is time to talk about the upcoming winter. I'll tell you exactly what I'm thinking and where we're going to land. First of all, the big idea, the big picture here. When you look at a winter forecast, there are so many different factors. I mean, there's just so many, and it's impossible to be 100% accurate, but I think you can get in the ballpark, and that's what I'm going to try to do here. You know, officially, we're in a La Nina watch. We are watching for colder than normal waters in the South Pacific in a key region near the equator. Um, right now, we're at about neutral. But most of the data, when you look at it, takes us into a La Nina light or a La Nina somewhere between 0 and minus 0.5 Celsius, so colder than normal water. Last winter, we were at about minus 0.6, so a little bit stronger than that. But I'll tell you something that I'm seeing. Some of the latest data has been going colder, closer to minus 1 for a brief time. Um, and I think that's definitely possible. Summer between minus 0.5 and 1 for a brief time, October, November, December. And that's just enough to influence the winter pattern around here. Because then I think once we get into January, February, March, I think the pattern's going to start to warm. And I think we'll go back to neutral. Um, but overall, when you look at the winter forecast, I think it does favor the northern tier. So at times, it may resemble last winter at times. All right, here's some other ideas. I've been thinking a lot about the atmospheric river. I think we're going to have some of that this winter. Remember, that's the highway, um, the Pineapple Express, that reaches back towards Hawaii and, and basically, like a conveyor belt, escorts in a lot of Pacific moisture into California. This is how California can get a significant amount of their yearly precipitation, in the, especially in the high Sierra. I think we'll see a few of those. Um, I don't think the winter is going to be dominated by that by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think what we're going to see here is somewhat of a jet, a dual jet influence at times. So you'll have the northern branch, which is the colder jet, and you'll have the subtropical branch together merging. Um, I do think we'll see some of that, and that would of course bring on some of that atmospheric river influence. I think when you look at the fall, October and November favors the Pacific Northwest for some of the best overall precipitation. I think December, it may shift a little further to the south and favor the Sierra. That might be your prime time. It could last into January, but that might, I think that's the way the fall might play out across a lot of the West. And I think with this type of pattern, you can tend to get, um, you can get into a Northwest flow pattern. And for areas in the interior Rockies, that's a really great thing um, for parts of Wyoming, parts of Utah, parts of um, northwest Colorado. That can be a significant pattern. So I think that can be one of the things that we're going to see. Let me just explain where we've been. So this is a look at all of the different El Nino and La Nina cycles. And you can see how we cycle up and down, back and forth from colder than normal water to warmer, back to colder. Neutral would be right in the middle, right on the, the midline there at zero. But last winter we were down here and you know we could be similar. Uh, we've had, of course we had the triple dip, which was back here for three winters straight in La Nina. We've had some significant El Nino events right there, 2015, 2016, back here. I mean, these were all significant El Ninos. So I think, you know, we're going to be, again, somewhere between zero to minus one. Um, and certainly in a La Nina pattern for at least a few months before it goes back to the neutral phase. Okay, let me show you... Um, so this is this captures a lot of the data. This is called the, the North American Multimodel Ensemble. And notice what it does here. You know, we take a dip. So down here on the scale, that's colder than normal water. That's a La Nina. And you can see it pulls us down between minus 0.5 and minus 1 between October, November, and December. And then we start to go back to neutral. So that's an agreement in that key region. So that, uh, that tends to agree that we're going to at least take a, uh, a quick trip into uh, La Nina. Let me show you the European model. So this is the sea surface temperature uh, anomaly map for November of 2025. Now, the euro comes in definitely colder than normal down here in that key region. And this is the area to watch right here. Um, that's the area to watch. And look at these 
Look at these dark blues. That corresponds anywhere to like from minus 0.5 to minus 1 on the scale, and that's November. Um, let me show you December. We're still there, although it's not as cold. This is probably corresponding, and again, this is the key region right here. You know, we're probably in that minus 0.5 range right here. So again, it's a brief trip, but I think that's going to be enough to affect the wintertime jet stream. And when I talk about that, uh, oh, one more. This is that NMME forecast, the North American Multimodel Ensemble, as far as sea surface temperature anomalies. And it's in agreement with the European. Look at the colder temperatures down here in the key region. In fact, look at some of those. I mean, you've got to figure that's at least minus one down there in some of those key areas. So it's definitely in agreement. Now, what does that mean for the pattern? Well, typically, when you have a La Nina, here are the U.S. impacts. It tends to take the jet stream, and there's your southern branch, so you get some southern branch involvement, and there's your northern branch right there. You tend to get a little bit of merging with those two, and you see the area that's most favored for heavy precipitation is in the northern tier. That is normally what you see when you have a, a full-on La Nina pattern. So I think at times it's definitely going to resemble that. And again, you can see that cooler than normal water there in the South Pacific. Here's how I think, I believe, the pattern is going to shake out this winter. All right, so you've got your predominant polar jet right here in yellow. And this is the area in green where I think we're going to see the most consistent precipitation this winter. So somewhere within there, I think we're going to see above normal snowfall. I think below that jet, I think you're looking at pretty normal conditions um, across a lot of Oregon, a lot of central to northern um, Utah, a lot of central and southern Colorado. The front range of Colorado looks pretty normal. Northern and northeast parts of Montana look pretty normal. And I think a lot of Alberta looks pretty normal. Um, even Tahoe, I think if we do have a strong fall, especially December, you could end up normal. Um, I think southern parts of California end up below normal. Uh, I think you're looking at below normal snowfall across a lot of southern Utah, southern Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. I've got a map that really details this coming up, but that's my overall pattern forecast. I think this is where we're going to see the most consistent storm systems, the northwest flow, and the most consistent cold fronts that run right down that jet and affect those areas in green. Okay. All right, here is my forecast, official forecast for the West. So I went with these little colored balls. The green, the green one, this is, should be very obvious. The green balls above normal winter precipitation, yellow normal, and red below normal. So let's dive into this. And it really follows that jet stream, that storm track I just showed you. So where you have the green, that's a lot of the Pacific Northwest, that's Washington State through a lot of Idaho. And you know, I debated, would it include the Wasatch? I think it does. Now, I can't tell you what the percentage is that the, you're going to end up with in some of these areas. It could be 5% above normal, could be 1% above normal, could be 20% above normal. But I think you're going to do just fine. And you can see how it kind of sneaks into northwest Colorado near I-70, runs up over the top of the Tetons, Big Sky, and then kind of runs up over Schweitzer, Red Mountain, Revelstoke, Kicking Horse. And, and that's where I think you're going to see the best chances for above normal snowfall this winter. All the yellow areas are either too close to call or just normal, normal winter snowfall right where you should be. That's a lot of Alberta, Marmot Basin, Sunshine Village, the whole Banff area, Whitefish, Snowball, Bridger, Red Lodge, all a normal winter or too close to call. A lot of the central and northern mountains of Colorado are right on the yellow. Um, a, big, a lot of the big resorts are yellow, Loveland, Keystone, uh, Winter Park, Eldora, Cameron Pass, all yellow, Monarch, yellow, Telluride, yellow, Silverton, yellow. Now the red areas 
below normal snowfall. And I think there's really good data for this. Again, I don't know if you're going to end up 1% below average or 20% below, but somewhere in that range. And that's a lot of southern Colorado, New Mexico, southern Utah, and even Mammoth down to Big Bear. I think you're going to be in the red. Um, I think all of Tahoe is pretty much in the yellow unless we have some unbelievable atmospheric rivers. I think you're probably going to end up somewhere right where you should be. Um, okay, let's, um, let's really hone in here just a little bit more. Now, this is a busy map, but this zooms in to uh, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, New Mexico. Again, pretty obvious. Um, green is going to be above normal. Yellow is right where you should be normal. Red is below. Now, you see these boxes over here and also right here. I put some, these are little insets. I didn't have enough room to squeeze all these resorts in, but they're all included. So if you find your favorite resorts, for example, Winter Park, Normal Winter, um, Snowmass Aspen, somewhere between yellow and green. Um, I think you're going to tip the scale to green, but it's somewhere in there. Vale, again, yellow to green, somewhere in there. Um, Telluride Yellow. Over here in the box, for Utah, a lot of the Wasatch is green. In fact, I have most of the Wasatch in green, if not all. The only one I think is going to be yellow is Sundance, and of course that's that's down south of the uh, the Wasatch. Kings Peak, the High Uint is green. Snow Basin green. Alta Snowbird green. But again, I can't tell you if it's going to be one percent above norm or twenty. I, I don't know. Impossible to know. Brian Head in the red. Elko uh, yellow. Sun Valley green. Brundage, green, Discovery, Bridger Bowl, yellow, Big Sky, green, Grand Targhee, Jackson Hole, Grand Teton, Jackson Hole, um, all the Tetons, down to Granite, uh, Granite Peak, all in the green. That's a pretty solid storm track for that area. Taos, Angel Fire Ski Santa Fe, probably in the red, unfortunately. Okay, let's go up to the northeast. Here's what I'm thinking. Um, most places, I'd say 98% of the resorts, I think are going to be in the yellow with this. Um, a pretty normal winter. The only places I have in green are up here in J Peak, Stowe, and then up into Sugarloaf. Very northern tier locations. Um, you could tip the scale into green up there. Otherwise, you're just looking at yellow across most of the northeast. So pretty normal winter there through the heart of Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, and New York. All right, guys, we're going to end this presentation on the big western map. Um, again, I think it's going to be dominated by um, this particular storm track right here. I think at times we're going to see the southern branch come in and start to throw a little bit of atmospheric river moisture in, but I think this will be the predominant pattern with uh, at least a brief La Nina influence um, to give us this pattern. And again, there is my Western forecast. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.